In this episode of Friday 5, we talk about five handy sleeper features in iOS 13. 9 to 5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Defense. The shield collection for your iPhone 11 is made up of a heavy duty machined aluminum frame, which provides military grade drop protection to survive drops over 10 feet without any excess bulk. While the inside is made of a soft rubber that wraps around your iPhone 11 to absorb and deflect shocks. And there's a special acoustic channel that amplifies the bottom speaker and redirects sound to the front of the case for a quality sound experience. It's pretty awesome. And the Defense Dual Charger can charge two devices at once, perfect for an iPhone and AirPods, and it has a built-in USB-A to charge a third device. Click the link in the description and get 20% off all cases with exclusive code 29 to 5. All right, so our first feature is how to quickly switch between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi networks right there on the fly. Now, normally, if you're in an app, you have to exit the app, you have to open up the settings app, venture over to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and then go ahead and switch to whatever network you want to. But in iOS 13, it's a lot easier. So you just open up Control Center, you long press on the little square that features your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and then you simply long press on Wi-Fi, for instance, and that brings up all your list of available Wi-Fi networks. You can go directly to the Wi-Fi settings as well, and you can do the same thing with Bluetooth as well. So that is super simple. The nice thing is you don't have to leave your app to switch to a preferred Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection in iOS 13. Now, one of the thorns in my side, and I think the thorn in everyone's side about iOS was the fact that you couldn't download large applications when connected to cellular. For instance, this almost two gigabyte game, there's no way you would have been able to download that via cellular in a previous version of iOS. But now in iOS 13, you can. Now by default, it will alert you and say, hey, this is a pretty big file. Do you really want to download this over cellular or you want to do it later on Wi-Fi? If it's over 200 megabytes, it's going to throw that prompt up to you. So I'll just say later on Wi-Fi, you can see it just basically queues up and I can, if I connect to Wi-Fi, it'll start downloading. But let me show you something else here. If you go to settings and you go to iTunes and App Store and you go to where it says app downloads, you see where it says default ask if over 200 megabytes. So that's why that prompt popped up but you can set it to always allow the download and bypass that prompt. So that is really cool because there's no need to have that prompt if you always want to allow downloads regardless of how big that download is. So I tap the download button, it's starting to download even though this thing is almost two gigabytes in size. That's really one of my favorite features in iOS 13. Another new feature in iOS 13 is the ability to take full page screenshots. Let me show you how to do this right now. So I'll just take a screenshot like normal, press the side button and the volume up button. And there you get the little preview, tap the preview. And by default, as you can see, it's just a normal screenshot. Of course, you have all of your markup tools below, but notice here, if you take a Safari screenshot and you tap where it says full page, that gives you the entire page. In other words, you have a full page screenshot right there at your fingertips. You can of course scroll using a little scroller on the right side. And if you use two fingers, you can move around, pinch in, pinch out. And of course you still have your markup ability. I'm gonna show you that right now. Let's switch to something a little lighter though. All right, so now we can, if we just use one finger, we can of course mark up. If we use two fingers, we can pinch in, pinch out and move about the page just like that. And once you're ready to save or share that screenshot, it's going to save it as a PDF. So let's go ahead and do that now. You can see right here, save PDF to files. Super simple, super easy. Now of all the items on this list, this one right here is perhaps the most important because it involves your privacy. So if you have location services enabled for the camera app, it will actually embed your current location where you take a photo inside that particular photo. That can be a very handy feature, but it can also introduce privacy risk when sharing that photo. So what Apple's done in iOS 13, when you are about to share a photo, iOS will actually warn you and say, hey, the location is included in this particular photo. That's a good thing. So you know that you're sharing your location. It's no longer this is it or is it not sort of thing. So if you tap where it says options, iOS 13 will allow you to strip out that location data on a case by case basis. So if I don't want to include my location data when I'm sharing this photo, I simply turn that switch off and that's it. 
Now the location data will be stripped out and it won't be embedded in that photo. So now you can feel free to share that photo with whoever and don't have to worry about are they gonna look at that EXIF data and kind of track exactly where I was when I took that photo? This alleviates that worry and as you can see, now it says no location right there at the top. Super handy feature. Okay, so last but not least, iOS 13 brings about the ability to automatically close Safari tabs. And if you're like me, I tend to leave a lot of tabs open, maybe stuff I wanna get back to, or sometimes I just forget that I have the tabs open and then I end up having, you know, 50, 100, 200 tabs open. This is actually a pretty small amount for me. Now, of course, you can go in and manually trim down your amount of open tabs simply by swiping to the left like this. But wouldn't it be cool if iOS could kind of help you out in this regard? Well, in iOS 13, it actually can. So if you go to settings and you go down to Safari, you're gonna notice the little tab section here. Let's scroll up a little bit. You see where it says close tabs? This will make it so that Safari will automatically close tabs that haven't been open in a day, in a week, or in a month. Now, obviously, if you set it to a day, that is pretty aggressive, so I'm not gonna do that. I'll set it to a month, and that way, I know that eventually, those tabs will be removed. Quite handy, don't you think? So ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at five under the radar sleeper features for iOS 13. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Again, special thanks to Defense for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Defense, of course, makes the Shield Collection for your iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It features a machine aluminum frame, drop protection, and an acoustic channel for better sound quality. Click the link in the description and use code 29to5 for 20% off all cases.